Croito is channeled by fluid. And we're back with tennis ace. Uh, sorry there wasn't a backbone video in the week like I had planned, but I'm still having a few computer issues. At least I know what it is now, but uh, still trying to fix it. So we're going to try and keep things a little uh, quick today. And let's get on with this. So we pick things up where we left them last. I hope if the system wants to let me work here. Yeah. Come on, there we go. <clears throat> I move around in the bed quite a bit before finally awaking. For some reason I just couldn't get comfortable during the night. I feel a desire to sleep in for a little longer. My recollections of the previous day's events come back to me slowly. As soon as I remember what Shuichi and I did. Suffice to say my face feels quite hot right now. Wait, where is he even? I look around for a bit. My eyes finally rest on my dresser where I see him hunched over looking at something. Ow, 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 ow. She turns around, shocked at my suddenly crying out in pain. I tried to sit up and it came out of nowhere, sending the shiver up my spine and making the fur of my neck stand in attention. What's going on? Are you okay? I'm fine, just... M my ass hurts. How am I even supposed to tell him something like that? Just... Uh, please don't look at me with those worried eyes. It's seriously hard to keep a secret when you look at me like that. It's nothing, I'm fine. Oh, come on, you're hiding something from me, aren't you? Yes, but I promise it's nothing bad. I'd just rather not say. Rather not s uh, Oh! Shuichi's cheeks started getting redder and his eyes darted away from me. I guess even he's embarrassed by it. So, I see you discovered Yamato's tank. Huh? Yamato's tank, you're looking at it just now. Oh, uh, yeah. Shuichi turns back around, staring at the cute little fish tank I have on top of my dresser. Yamato, the emerald-coloured goldfish, swims around inside, as carefree as can be. The day after Shuichi gave him to me, I went to a pet store and bought the most spacious tank I could fit in my room. It's got rocks and algae inside, and the back of the tank is even covered in the printed film that makes it look like there are even more plants beyond the limits of the glass tank. Kind of like a real-life green screen effect. There certainly is a lot of green inside there. Well, he looks pretty happy. How do you tell? He's a fish. Well, I call it a hunch. Shuichi leans forward again, staring into the tank. I've got to admit, it does give me a pretty nice view of his backside. What of him wearing nothing but a pair of tight-fitting boxer briefs? He waves at Yamato, continues to swim lazily by. If he notices Shuichi at all, he doesn't seem to show it. But then again, he is just a fish. What else would he do? Wave back. This is the first time you've seen Yamato's tank, isn't it? Yeah, even in the times when I came over, I haven't really gone into your room since I gave him to you, so I guess it's to be expected. And last night I didn't even notice him with the lights out. This is a pretty nice little tank you got for him. Do you keep the filter connected to that little hose around the back? Yep. Oh, by the way, did Aki ever say anything about Yamato? You never told me his reaction. Aki helps me take care of him every now and again. He's really meticulous too. He printed a chronogram for feeding times and taped it to the side of the tank. Oh, I knew it. There's no way you'd have been careful enough to plan this out yourself. Thanks for the vote of confidence. Speaking of Aki, I messaged him last night to ask if everything was okay over at his friend's house. He hasn't answered me yet. Oh, makes sense. He was spending the night at a friend's house. I doubt he'd be checking his phone very much during it. I know, it just worries me. All he has to do is breathe and you'll only be worrying about the quality of the oxygen. That's not true, I'm not that bad. Really? Need I remind you, on the day I gave you your matter, you also freaked out about his having a date? He's too young to be dating. Well, face it, man. You're a bit of a paranoid obsessive control freak when it comes to your brother. What? No, I'm not. And also, you're in denial. I'm not that bad. 
Hey, it's not like it's all bad. It shows you care. Just loosen the strings a little bit. Easy of you to say. It's not you that has to worry about someone's well-being almost every waking hour of the day when you're not together. Seriously. I have a teenage rebellious baby sister that lives apart from me. Point taken. I get out of the bed. Winter and I feel another sudden flash of pain emanating from my... nether region. Are you sure you're okay? Yeah, yeah, I'll leave. It just caught me by surprise earlier, that's all. I'm sorry. For what? I, um... I took things too fast. I only plan on giving you oral puts. I got too carried away. It's even rough on you. I crossed the line. I'm sorry. I take a deep breath. For some reason, having Chuichi freaking out in front of me calms me down immensely. I probably shouldn't tell him that, that, because it might upset him. No, you didn't. You're fine. Well, I pressured you into it. You wouldn't have agreed if I didn't. I walk up to him, wrapping my hand around his muzzle and forcing it shut. Shuichi's eyes immediately go wide and he pulls away from me. Hey, watch it. What do you think you're doing? Keeping you from running your mouth. Well, nicer ways to go about that. You could have made me bite my tongue. Oh, yeah. Isn't that the same thing I did to Haruki last week? Oops. Look, I'll be honest. I was really nervous last night, and yeah, you're pushing me is a big part of why I went with it. That doesn't necessarily mean it was a bad thing. At least I don't feel like it was. I don't feel disrespectful taking advantage of or anything, really. In fact, now that it's happened, I feel a lot more comfortable around you because, hey, what else can we do we haven't already? I guess that's a point. I mean, you stand in front of me in just your underwear, I'm totally fine with it. Before, I'd feel uncomfortable even if you had a shirt on. Is that why you're okay with being naked in front of me? I look down at myself and remember that I didn't put any clothes on yet. Ah! Never mind, I spoke too soon. Just turn around and put some clothes on. Where's my underwear? Wow, two whole minutes without freaking out. Well, that's a new record, actually. An hour later, the kitchen's completely taken over by the smell of toasted bread. When Shuichi and I both got dressed, we walked downstairs so we could have breakfast. Moving around has been a little harder than I expected right now. Out of my wind, Shuichi nearly lunges at me with worry. Which, of course, just means I begin masking them so he won't keep doing that. I love the guy, but he fusses over a little thing. That's just beyond annoying. Um, platonically, of course. I think. So... I'm trying to think of something to talk about, but it's proven unexpectedly hard. And then when he tries to jump to my aid, we barely said two words to each other. Even small talk would be better than nothing right now. Yeah? Why is he being so jumpy? It's hard to be calm and relaxed around someone acting like a child awaiting punishment. Come on, Shuichi, I already said everything's fine. Stop looking so guilty. I can't help it. It's been an hour since I said things were fine. Why are you still freaking out? We are fine. Stop being so weird about it. You're making it really hard for me to act like it's not a big deal. I just think... <sighs> I groan, placing the plate with the two sandwiches I was preparing down the counter with a loud clanking sound. Oh my god, you're so annoying sometimes. F forgive me if I have a conscience. Urge to strangle growing. Look, I'm only going to say this one more time. You and I are fine. I don't need or want any apologies. I don't feel slighted or disrespected. We are fine. Now sit down, shut up and eat. Uh, yes, sir. He quickly does, I say, put in a chair and grabbing one of the sandwiches from the plate. Shuichi's has toasted bread, cheese, egg, fried chicken katsu and spicy pickled cabbage. I've already placed the devil's shredded paper on mine, though. That stuff has a nasty taste and texture. Instead, I just took a few slices of ham to put it in its place. Shuichi munches on his food with a real bummed-out look on his face. I know that look. It's the I-want-to-say-something-but-shouldn't face. It's amazing. Even when he's been completely silent, he somehow still finds a way to annoy me. All right, fine. Out with it. Out with what? 
Oh please, you're a terrible secret keeper. You look like a pissed off customer who's about to leave a negative review on Yelp without saying anything to the staff. Where the hell are you getting these examples? We're on the internet, but that's not the point. Spill. Oh, I feel bad about yesterday. But why? I already told you so many times we are fine. Why do you insist on choosing to be annoyed? Well, it's not about that. I mean, I don't love my issues on your plate last night. In an effort to get things back on track, I became forceful. As soon as I um, finished, and after I woke up the first time, I started thinking more clearly. My mind was in a really bad place last time. I wasn't thinking straight, even before I got some... Um, horny? Uh, I was looking for a different word to say. No reason to. We have the actual word. Carry on. Look, I'm just... Even if you say you're fine with it, I'm not. I didn't want to go that far. I wanted our first time to be more special. I wanted to treat you right. Show you just how much you mean to me before we finally made love. Made love? Wow, I guess he's one of those guys. So is that what this is about? You think our first time was bad? Not bad. I never said that word. It, it was really good for me. I even got carried away during because you was just so... Uh, I mean... Look, my point is I built this up inside my head for so long and it wasn't what I expected. For one, in the scenario I pictured in my head, I didn't press you into it, much less leave you crippled the morning after. First of all, I'm not crippled. Second of all, you're barely making any sense. Shuichi grumbles, looking away from me with a frown. How is it the Duke can get laid and come out of it even moodier than he was before? I mean, I'm the one who wound up with a sore ass. Why is he complaining? It's easy for me to keep a clear head when he's being so ridiculous. How can I put this? I'm so focused trying to calm him down, I don't have the energy to freak up myself. Look, having expectations is all fine and good. If you spend months or years planning some of the finest details, chances are reality won't be able to measure up. That's just asking to be disappointed. I know. I just think you deserve more. Listen, big guy, I already told you I'm fine. Were things a little rushed there? Definitely, I can't disagree with that. I don't regret anything. Well, I may regret not taking longer to stretch a little bit. Right. I got to spend the night with you. I'm surprisingly relaxed about it. I don't feel nearly as self-conscious as I thought I would. Besides, I'm so panicky you probably wouldn't have been able to get me to do without some amount of coercion. No, it just sounds dangerous. Hey, if I really didn't want, if I really didn't want it, I'd have refused. Not the thought didn't cross my mind at the time, but hey, he doesn't need to know that. Not that I'd admit this to him, but last night actually felt really good. I'm sure it's worth being in pain the day after, but... With that stuff hopefully dealt with, are you good? Well, I guess. Uh oh, that wasn't a happy, I guess. Talk to me. I already talked to you about it last night. Do you mean the thing about your dad? The very same. I thought you said you didn't want to talk about it anymore. I don't want to, but I kind of feel like I have to. A lot of pressure brought me by him my whole life. I know he's trying to push me into a career he thinks will be good for me, but I can't help but feel that it's not really me. I mean, sure, I'm probably very good at a management job. I'm organised, good with computers, prompt, punctual. Those are all things he drilled into me over the years. He always said he wanted me to join some kind of company and make my way to the board of directors with time. Isn't that pretty much your dad's career path? Yep, he wants me to follow in his footsteps, hardcore. Oh, don't get me wrong, his plans are good. Most of what he says makes sense. I could have a really good, comfortable life. I just worked with what he decided for me. I told myself over the years I was fine with it. But now that I finally run out of time and have to give up volleyball like I promised, I would. I feel so conflicted. I don't think I loved it so much, Carriet. It honestly scares me to realise just how hard in denial I was all these years. I don't want to give it up, no matter what he says. That's... I mean, I always thought you were really in denial, but you constantly disagreed with me on that, so eventually I decided to keep my mouth shut. Oh, sorry about that. I guess you really did know best. Oh, if he's going to be acting so downcast about it, I can't really gloat. Uh, not that I would. Oh, no, no, I would never. Also, this lot of information to process first thing in the morning. I really wanted to give him my own opinion on it, but... I feel like this is the sort of thing where I should just be a good boyfriend and listen to his problems. I don't need to give him any advice unless he asks for it. 
you have any idea what you're going to do about it? I want to tell them I want to continue, uh, at least for the winter competition. You know, it's going to be just as hard to give it up then as it is now. Oh, I know that. Or at least I do on a rational level. I can't really know how I'm going to actually feel when the time comes. So, are you really going to do this? Well, I think so. I'll leave it after midterms. Maybe if I show him some really high grades, he'll feel charitable enough to let me. Hear him say the words, let me, really bothers me deep, deep down. Well, what I do is think you could be there with me, you know, for moral support. Of course, if this is what you really want, then I'll support you 100%. Thanks. I haven't officially quit the volleyball club yet, so I still have some time. Besides, it'd be a shame if I left now that the club has the best chance of winning it's had in years. You mean, because of our rookie? Yeah, he's still being a rookie, but he's still a lot more cooperative now. I think getting to actually be on court for the entire match during the final has really made something click inside his brain. He's been surprisingly well behaved. Or at least as well behaved as one would expect from him. If he'd been like that for longer, we probably could have won. As things stood, he didn't mesh well with the team yet due to a lack of familiarity. Man, he starts talking volleyball, it's like an immediate mood uplift. You were Karen just thinking of confronting your father two seconds ago, and now you're all smiles? How did you manage to go this long seriously believing that you didn't care about the sport? You really are hopeless. Hopefully things will work out well for you guys. Yeah, I really don't want to be the only senior retiring this early. And there's all sticking with the club. Yep, for better or worse, our club only really has two types of players. The ones that don't care about their grades and business exams, and the ones that do well enough to not need to worry about it. And, well, then there's me. I really don't fall into either of those two camps. You fall into the camp of the demonic drill sergeant. You're looking at me funny. I am? No, I'm pretty sure I'm looking at you pretty normally. Hmm, sure, if you say so. By the way, what are your plans for today? Should we go out, stay in, or maybe we go to the arcade? Those are all wonderful ideas, but um, I actually will go home in like an hour or so. What? Why? Well, it's just the weekend for midterms. My dad didn't even want me to come here in the first place, let him spend the night. Besides, I already goofed off for all, for all of Saturday. I really need to study. Study? That's your great idea to spend a Sunday. Yeah, some of us still need to focus on their studies to get good grades. All this just to placate your father. Did you even listen to the stuff I said to you? I knew good grades have any chance of being allowed to stay on the team. I heard. Doesn't mean I like it. I'm oh, sorry, Carriet. I'd like nothing more than to spend my whole day with you, but we both know that's not feasible. But hey, maybe Akil have gotten home by the time I leave. He can keep you company. Sure. My little brother's a perfect substitute for my boyfriend. He and I can have so much fun together in the same way that I could with you. I know you're being sarcastic. Ew. Don't throw a tantrum and speak you're not getting in your way. What? A tantrum? I didn't... I don't throw tantrums. Most of the time. You're pouting. I'm not pouting. You're pouting. Maybe I just go home right now. No, I was just kidding. Uh-huh. So, you'll stay for another hour, right? What can we do with this one hour? There isn't really much to be done. I could have you organise the house, check if the storm last night caused any damages. Do all your ideas have to be so boring? Yes, it comes with the territory. Shuichi leans forward and plants a kiss on my nose. Besides, I already had a lot of fun yesterday. I feel my cheeks going red and look away, pretending to cough. <laughs> You're so cute. Shut up! Go on, this won't take long. Just have to check the power suggested in for any electronics before you pulled them out of the plug. Do we really have to do this now? I'm sure, that way we can just relax for a bit before I have to leave. A few hours later... I mildly browsing the internet on my phone, feeling too lazy to get off the couch. Shuichi left almost two hours ago and I've barely done anything since then. I need to start preparing lunch at some point, but... Yeah, I don't really feel like it right now. I turn around to the sound of the door being unlocked and opened. A few seconds later, Aki shows up. Good morning, where's Shuichi? He drops the messenger bag he took to his friend, sets by the side of the sofa and sits next to me. 
He left a while ago, said he had to study for midterms. Oh yeah, yours are tomorrow, aren't they? You should probably study too. Well, I don't need to hear that from you too. Whatever you say, was everything okay over here? I heard some areas of town lost power last night. Your friend's house didn't? No, although a tree fell right in front of his house. He only missed the gate. Ended up locking us in until it was cleared away. What? Oh, it's alright. His house is way further back from the gate's wall, so it didn't even come close to it. Well, I didn't really miss the power cables, though. You're not going on sleepovers again. Uh-huh, sure. I'm being serious here. You're being dramatic. Little Twerp rolls his eyes, get up and walk into the kitchen. I follow him around, giving him a real stink eye the whole time. He used to get shaped up right away when he was younger whenever I did this, but nowadays it's like he doesn't even care. You keep doing that and your face will get stuck that way. I hate teenage years. What about you? How's your night? It was like you said. Power went out. Up until then we'd be watching movies and chatting. Do you see anything good? You're trying to change the subject. Look, you're not going to keep me from having a social life just because you're a worry wart. I'll take this up with Mom if I have to. A tree fell. It blocked you in. How are you not more freaked out over this? Because it was a tree falling during a storm. It's only that red. It's not like we have any control over it. Besides, you have trees planted right inside the house's outer gates. For all we know, we're at a high risk of having a tree fall on a house than they are. And you have two trees going right outside your window. Are you going to install a moratorium on trees now? What? Moratorium? Since when did you even know that word? Did he even use it right? I have no idea. Look, you're worried about me, I get it. It's kind of cute and all, but you don't have to go all psycho because of it. It's cute. Are you seriously talking down to me right now? Aki grabs a water bottle from the fridge, taking a sip of water, giving me a couple of pats on the side of my arm and walking back to the living room. Good talk. I can't believe I'm getting completely dismissed here. I'm losing an argument to a child. Stop trying to walk away from me. Or stop trying to make up crazy rules. Aki, I'm just trying to look out for you. Why don't you need to look out for me? I'm a grown-up. I can look out for myself. You're twelve. My point exactly. Um, am I even having an aneurysm? Is this what an aneurysm feels like? Aki. Look, I appreciate you worrying about me. I swear if you try to instill rules that actually make sense, I'll do my best to follow them. But you're being way too crazy. How am I being crazy? You spent the night out on a sleepover. A tree fell in your general vicinity. As a result, I'm abandoning sleepovers forever. What about this is crazy? Can I just go to my room? You know, the place where things make sense and you're not allowed inside. <sighs> Good luck keeping me from going inside. I installed the lock on my door. You installed the lock on your door? You do know repeating what I say in that weird huffy tone isn't going to make it any less true, right? Since when did you install a lock on your door? Last month. And before you go apeshit over it, Mom signed off on it. Apeshit? Where do you even learn to talk like that? Oh, God. Is my little brother turning into a delinquent? What? No way, Mom would never agree to that. Of course she would, otherwise you wouldn't have a lock on your door. That, that is beside the point. Oh, I'm sure it is. Okay, fine, I'll let it slide this time, but you're on thin ice. Right, well, I'll help you sleep at night. I'm going up to my room. Call me if you need help making lunch. Aki tries to slip away from me, but I grab his arm before he can do so. Wait! No, you're being really annoying right now. All right, all right, fine, I'll drop it. Really? Yes, that's been unreasonable. You've been unreasonable? Shocking. Hey, I'm trying to meet you in the middle here. Don't be a twat. Now what for this sudden change of heart? It's really unlike you. Well, sweet, you grilled me over earlier this morning when I mentioned being worried about you. Said I'm too much of an anxious mess when it comes to your safety. Well, he's not wrong. Still, I'm sorry you had to hear that. You could try saying that without a smile on your face. I'm well, sorry, I'm trying. It's the best I can do. I guess you each needs to be the voice of reason even when he's not here. I'll have to thank him later. You're enjoying this, aren't you? Immensely. Little bastard's laughing at me now. Uh, I wish I believed in physical punishments. I wish I'd gotten home earlier. Any time I wish you each any more. It's sad you want to spend more time with him than you do with me. You said that, not me. 
Oh, don't get upset. I still love you. I'm not upset. I love you too. Anyway, I'm hungry. You didn't help prepare lunch. From you? You can't even cook. Well, yeah, it can be useful in other ways. Alright, feel free to tell me when you discover one of them. Aren't you funny all of a sudden? You give me a hard time, I give you a hard time. That's how we keep our relationship equal. You already were giving me a hard time, just now. Mm, denied. I take it back, I think I hate you. Friday, June the 9th. The school bell finally rings, marking the end of the last day of midterms. God, this whole week sucked. Exam weeks always suck. It's not like the tests were particularly hard, but man, are they ever annoying. And June spent pretty much the entire week in a catatonic state. I'm really afraid for his grades just watching his body language. June Coon, keep fighting. Everyone please pass your papers along. Hope you won't have anyone failing right from the get-go, huh? Most students have such defeated looks on their faces. Meanwhile, the stag doesn't seem to care at all. Sometimes I think he might secretly enjoy watching our misery. I maintain the teachers as a whole are all evil. The results of your test should be out by the end of next week. Anyone who scored below 50 will have to take remedial lessons on their failing subjects after class. Oh, it doesn't come to life for anyone in this classroom. I doubt anyone is even listening at this point. You give the same spiel every year. People have learned to tune it out by this point. So the nightclub activities will restart on Monday. You're all dismissed for today. He walks out of the room, carrying all of our exams with him. Everyone's hopes and dreams. As soon as he leaves, the class lets out a collective sigh of relief. I hang back for a couple of minutes, letting my brain rest for a bit before I try to think any more complex thoughts. And also because I talk to some of my classmates so we can compare answers. But I can gather there seems to be barely any consensus on the answers for today's tests. I don't know whether I think that's a good thing or bad thing. Oh, yeah, I just lost a few years of my life. So I'm heading back to my desk to pick up my bag. I see June slumped on his, looking completely defeated. You okay there, big guy? I've barely gone any sleep this past week. Come on, it can't have been that bad. The last time I slept was on Wednesday. I take it back. That is really bad. You stay at home and try to relax. Oh yeah, I keep telling myself I rehearsed as soon as the test ended, but I feel like I have the energy for that. I give him a few comforting pats on the back, feeling sorry for the poor tiger. Hang in there, I'm sure you've done your best. I need to get better with studying. Maybe looking to get in a tutor? Yeah. What are you going to be doing with the rest of your day? And at that point my computer crashed and I'm still having some issues with it, so that was a short tennis ace. Sorry for the abrupt end into that, but it is going to be a real battle to try and get that going. It took me a few hours to record Eden's Reach last week because of this issue. So we'll end it here and hopefully I can get the computer fixed in the week. Before I do, as always, thanks to my top patrons, Chris, Evan King, David Taylor, Samuto, Brian Hall, Anubis Silverwind, Ida Corval, Brandon Bradford, Bastian, Mark Huskerton, Marcus, Kopi, Gunnamuller, Tiger Cub, Sindri Dragowulf, Dissonance, Besuksu, Kobus Visser, and Kartek. And yes, I might be using some of your Patreon money to get this computer fixed when I can c confirm what is wrong. I think I've fixed it temporarily, but I need to get to look at it. So anyway, sorry about the uh, weird ending to this episode of Tennis Ace. We'll definitely pick it up in the same place next time we play at this VN, which will be either later this month or early in November. I have to go through and work out my list there. So anyway, I hope you enjoyed it, and uh, yeah, it's been one of those weeks. So thanks for watching, and hopefully next weekend we'll have a proper video. Bye for now.